Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Salal Khan YouTube channel. In the previous video, we had a discussion on the disk type overhead line insulator. So if you have any questions, the comment section is for you guys. Now I talked about uh, uh, the leakage currents over there. I said that there is a leakage current and creepage distance and this and that. So how do you know basically that there is a leakage? So you know it from the voltage fluctuations. In the substations, when you, when you check the open circuit voltages, there would be voltage fluctuations on any line or any phase. So there may be something you know like a drastic effect due to persistent flash overs on that insulator which can cause the surface to become more or less carbonized and this is called a surface tracking and this and that we talked about it but you know the thing is that leakage is examined through voltage fluctuations in this video we see how to mathematically analyze an overhead line insulator so an insulation model an equivalent circuit is that you have a resistor in parallel with a capacitor and this is called what this is called a Maxwell model this is called Maxwell model similarly you can have a resistor in series with a capacitor and this is called a void model so depending upon the use depending on application you can use any of them for now in my particular analysis i would be using the maxwell model fine yes so why uh, and, and and how is that so basically you can say is that your uh, 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 resistance is very high for an insulator so i can do what i can open circuit my resistance if my resistance is very high so which means that my this is an open circuit so i can model my given insulator as a capacitor only i can model my given uh, uh, insulator as a capacitor only fine yes sir so let's talk about an insulation string let's talk about a three disc string this is number one this is number two this is number three a line conductor is connected over here and this is connected to the tower cross are so if i draw the equivalent circuit if this is my tower cross arm so this is my unit number three capacitor this is my unit number two capacitor this is my unit number one capacitor over here is my line conductor the resistances i have ignored in parallel let me just you know extend this cross arm this is connected to the tower which is all the way grounded over here this over here you have is a line potential v the voltage of the conductor is v the line voltage but the voltage across the string would be what the voltage across the string would be the phase voltage fine yes and how is this string formed so basically we've seen this in the previous video that that you know the pin of the second is placed over the head of the first and this is locked over here whatever the mechanism may be so this is have a look we've got a two disc string we've got a two disc string and then the third eventually the fourth and leave, leading to whatever it may be now we did not talk about the number of discs required in the previous video so roughly you could say that the number of discs are the given voltage the given phase voltage divided by 11 the given line voltage divided by 11 or you can do what you can convert it to the phase voltage and then divide it by 11 plus some safety factor plus some safety factor and where do this safety factor comes from so this comes from the your experience from the vulnerable points etc for example for 66 kv you use 5 discs for 132 kv you use 9 for 220 it's 13 or 15 for 500 it's 32 or 34 and so on right anyways let's come to this so these are all identical units let me use c for them right but now i have a problem over here the the cap is a metallic point the pin is a metallic point 
so which means that I've got this joining point the cap in the pin this joining point this is a metallic point over here so and similarly this tower is a metallic point so what do I have is that two metallic points in between is air which would be acting as a dielectric and won't I have a shunt capacitance over here I will I will similarly this one the oh. cap of this the pin of this this is a metallic contact the tower is a metallic contact in between is air I will have a metallic I will have a shunt capacitance over here as well this shunt capacitance normally in the questions in the books you are mentioned some ratio this self capacitance to this mutual capacitance ratio but I will just take it simply the, the range is generally it is 10% or 20% of this value I would just give it a name I would just take it 20% of this I would take it 20% of this now well, look, this would cause a problem if this was not there the voltages across all the strings would be equally divided and you would have used V by 11 directly but this is not the case you have some leakage currents so let me analyze this circuit let's say the current through this is I1 the current through this is I2 the current through this is I3 the voltages drops are V1 across this V2 across this and V3 across this the leakage currents are let's say IA through this one and IB through this one. Now I use the word of charging and leakage current. So charging current because this is a physical, physically this is present you have a capacitor. But leakage current I use the word over here for this one is because that they are not physically present but somehow their effect is present. So now I've got what? I've got these two nodes. So let me just, you know, simply apply the KCL and that would be it. So KCL to node number one, let's say, and this states what? That your, that your I1 would be equal to I2 plus IA. I1, this would be equal to I2 plus IA, the current entering plus the, is equal to the current leaving. So now I will use the formula, you've got V is equal to IZ. Or you can say that I is equal to V Y I is equal to V Y now Z is equal to 1 over Omega C for capacitance so I could say that Y would be equal to Omega C for capacitance so I would just use it over here so I is equal to V Y I 1 is the voltage over here is V 1 and the capacitance is C the, this Y so Omega C into V 1 this would be equal to I2. So this is omega C V2. Plus IA is the leakage current. So 0.2 omega C and the voltage across this. The voltage across this is what? Have a look. This is connected across these two points. So which means the voltage is V2 plus V3. Or you could write the total V minus V1. This point and this point is the same and the same as this point so this is connected across this and this point so the voltage is V2 plus V3 or you could say total voltage minus a V1 so point 1 omega C and the voltage is V minus a V1 fine isn't it like this let me check isn't it like this it is it is I don't have it over here yes it is it is like this so let's suppose omega c cancels out right so you've got a v1 is equal to what v2 plus 0.1 v minus a 0.1 v1 or you could say that v2 is equal to v2 is equal to 1.1 .1 v1 minus 0 0.1 v isn't it like this it is but I believe I have a mistake somewhere and that mistake is that this is point 0.2 yes this is point 0.2 this is point 0.2 okay so please just do the calculations this would be 1.2 and minus 0.2 V and this would be my equation number one let's say fine yes similarly now I apply KCL to my node number two 
KCl to node number 2. So, I2 is the entering current. I3 and IB are the leaving current. So, I2 is equal to I3 plus IB. I2 would be omega CV2. Omega CV2. And I3 would be omega CV3. Omega CV3 plus IB. IB would be 0.2 omega C. 0.2 omega C and the voltage across this have a look is the same as this one. This is connected across these two points or these two points. So 0.2 omega C V3. Fine. Now omega C would cancel out again. You've got V2 is equal to V3 plus 0.2 V3. So I would just write a 1.2 V3. Put the value of V2 over here. So you've got a 1.2 V1 minus 0.2 V and is equal to V3 and divide this by a 1.2. So my V3 would come out to be V1 minus divide 0.2 by 1.2. Divide, uh, wait a minute, divide 0.2, where is it? Okay, here. Zero 0.2 divided by 1.2 this gives you 0 0.16 0 0.16 uh, V and this is let's say my equation number 2 so I would just be uh, you know I converted this in terms of V1 and V again now my principal equation is have a look that my total potential V would be equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 isn't it like this as I have V1 plus V2 plus V3 is equal to the total voltage V. Isn't it like this? It is. So let's put down the values. So I would write V is equal to V1. I don't have a value. Plus V2 is 1.2 V1 minus 0.2 V plus V3 is V1 minus 0.16 V1 minus 0.16 time v and let me check over here yes fine it is fine now so v would come out to be v is equal to v1 plus 1.2 is 2.2 and then you have 3.2 3.2 v1 and then you have v is 0.2 and 0.16 so 0.36 minus 0.36 over here you would have a 1.36 over here you would have a 1.36 v or or v1 would be equal to what 1.36 upon 3.2 times v isn't it like this it is so 1.36 divided by 3.2 this gives you 0.42 times V. V1 is 0 0.42 times V. Is that fine? It is. Now you can put down this value in V2 and V3 and you can calculate it. So V2 would be what? Put over here V1 is equal to 0.42. So this would be 0.42 multiplied by 1.2 and then a minus 0 0.2, this would be 0 0.30. V2 is 0 0.30 V. And then similarly, put this value of V3 over here. Uh, put in V3, this V1 is 0.42 minus 0 0.16. 0 0.42 minus 0 0.16. This would be equal to, and I believe I have a mistake. I have a mistake. No, 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 I put a divided sign. So minus 0.16, this is 0.26. V3 is 0 0.26 times V. Have a look. If I talk about this in terms of percentage, so my V1 is 42% of the total value of V. V2 is 30% of the total value of V. And V3 is 26% of the total value of V, which means I am talking of a non-uniform voltage distribution. I have got a non-uniformity over here. 
and how is that so the string the insulator disc that is nearest to the conductor is taking most of the voltage is taking most of the stress which means that my v1 is greater than v2 is greater than v3 the as you move towards the earthing structure the stress on the discs reduces the voltage stress reduces this is not good i do not like this I do not want this and this your non-uniformity is expressed in the in terms of a string efficiency you've got a word by the name of a string efficiency which is calculated as the total voltage divided by the number of discs multiplied by the voltage at the nearest uh, disk which means over here if I talk about the string efficiency so the total voltage V multiplied by the number of disk N and my nearest voltage is V1 so over here in this particular case my string efficiency is V divided by number of disks are 3 multiplied by V1 is 0.42 times V so this comes out to be what let's check it out 1 upon 3 multiplied by 0 0.42 this is 79 percent this is 0 0.79 or this is 79 percent fine yes now this is not good what is not good the the not good thing is that this disc is taking most of the stress v1 so what do you have is it has a, it is at a risk of a breakdown it is at a risk of a failure so if this fails if this v1 fail this first unit fails the total stress the voltage would be across the remaining two units only which means the second unit would fail eventually and then the total voltage would be across this only and eventually the third unit would fail and this would be in a quick succession and this is called what this is called a cascaded failure this is called a cascaded failure this is not good I have to do something I have to do something and by doing that something maybe my string efficiency also increases the string efficiency gives me the amount of the non-uniformity the lower the string efficiency the more is non-uniform is the voltage distribution across the string the higher the string efficiency the uniform the equal share it is taking so what can I do we see that in the next video we see that in the next video but if I say over here the problem is being caused by this shunt capacitance this is causing me the problem why because if this was not present so I would have had a single you know I would have had this this sort of a this sort of a distribution a simple circuit this was a voltage and this would have been equally divided among the three and equal stress and the number of units I would have simply calculated by V upon 11 but this is not the case over here this is not the case over here one is taking higher voltage the other is lower and this is lowest so this is not good and what do I do for this how do I find the cure so for that you need to watch the next video till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye